श्रीमन श्री महाप्रभु की जय श्री श्री पंचतत्व की जय श्री प्रहलाद नरसिंह देव भगवान की जय श्रील प्रभुपाद की जय समेत गौर भक्त वृंद की जय निताय गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बो ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जया मुदीर ये नष्ट प्राषु अभद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टिकी रीडम फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवत टेन्थ कैंटो चैप्टर वन टेक्स्ट सिक्सटी फोर कंसाय भगवान् चशंसाभ्येत नारद भूमिर्भाराय मणा दैत्या विधोद्यम कंसाय भगवान् चशंसाभ्येत नारद भूमिर्भाराय मणा दैत्यना विधोद्यम कंसाय भगवान् चशंसाभ्येत नारद भूमिर्भाराय मणा दैत्या विधोद्यम Matajis Etat, all these words about the Yadu family and Vrishni family. Kamsa ya unto King Kamsa. Bhagavan, the most powerful representative of the supreme personality of Godhead. Shashamsa informed Kamsa who was in doubt Abhetya after approaching him Narada the great sage Narada 
Bhumi. On the surface of the earth. Bharaya Mananam. Of those who were a burden. Daityanam Cha. And of the demons. Vadha Udhyamam. The endeavor to kill. Translation. Once the great sage Narada approached Kamsa and informed him of how the demoniac persons who were a great burden on earth were going to be killed. Thus Kamsa was placed into a great fear and doubt. Purport. It has already been discussed that Mother Earth implored Lord Brahma to give her relief from the distress created by the burdensome demons and that Lord Brahma informed her that Lord Krishna himself was going to appear. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 4.8 Paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya cha dushkritam dharma samsthapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge Whenever there is a burden created by the demons and whenever the innocent devotees are distressed by demoniac rulers, the Lord appears in due course of time to kill the demons with the assistance of his real representatives who are technically called demigods. In the Upanishads, it is stated that the demigods are different parts of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As it is the duty of the parts of the body to serve the whole, it is the duty of Krishna's devotees to serve Krishna as he wants. Krishna's business is to kill the demons and therefore this should be a devotee's business also. Because the people of Kali Yuga are fallen, however, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, out of kindness for them, did not bring any weapons to kill them. Rather, by spreading Krishna consciousness, love of Krishna, he wanted to kill their nefarious demoniac activities. This is the purpose of the Krishna consciousness movement. Unless the demoniac activities on the surface of the world are diminished or vanquished, no one can be happy. The program for the conditioned soul is fully described in Bhagavad Gita. And one simply has to follow these instructions to become happy. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has therefore prescribed Harer Nama, Harer Nama, Harer Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalau Nastyeva, 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 Gati Anyatha. Let people chant the Hare Krishna mantra constantly, then the demoniac tendencies will be killed and they will become first class devotees, happy in this life and in the next. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyanan Janashalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthavitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamahiyam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guran Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha he Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhano Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara 
ಶ್ರೀವಾಸ್ ಆದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ವಿ ಬೆಗ ದ ಲೋರ್ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ವೈಷ್ಣವಸ್ ಟು ಗಿವ್ ದರ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಶೇರ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ಎಸ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಗೋಸ್ ನಾರದ ಮುನಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಅಪ್ರೋಚ್ಡ್ ಕಮ್ಸ ಇನ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಅವೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ಲಾನ್ narada muni is the greatest of all vaishnavas he is loved by everyone demigods love him demons love him generally when demons they see some devotee of the lord they want to finish him off but with narada muni they really like him because narada muni his only purpose is spreading krishna consciousness and he is one of the most enthusiastic devotee who wants to see krishna's pastimes he cannot wait for x amount of time till comes up becomes you know his the pot of sin becomes overflowing he just can't wait till that time he has to come and say look the demi gods are planning you should do something more nasty don't spare any of vasudev's kids because when vasudev comes for the first time he says okay you know no problem you don't you know i have no threat with this first son of yours i am worried about the eighth child you can keep this child and narad muni says if this goes on it will take a long time let's make the process very fast so krishna will appear as soon as possible so he goes up to kamsa and he completely confuses him and he starts you know showing how the first child could be the eighth child and how the eighth child could be actually the first child and he's such an expert kamsa is completely confused and he decides to kill everybody what that does it brings krishna's appearance quicker all of krishna's past times will ha- start happening before this and he uses his intelligence very nicely and goes and tells kamsa that in the heavenly planets the demigods are already planning on how to destroy all the demons on the earthly planet so now kamsa gets afraid thus kamsa was placed into great fear and doubt he becomes scared what is going to happen how can i protect myself and in this fear he's going to make a lot of sinful activities thus bringing krishna's appearance quicker ashara prabhupad he mentions in this uh, in his purport second paragraph krishna's purpose is to annihilate demons and protect his devotees krishna his main purpose is to come and have relationship with his devotees while having relationship with his devotees he destroys the demons he doesn't come to destroy the demon that's why it says paritranaya sadhu naam that's the first thing he comes to deliver the saintly people in different incarnations krishna appears kills the demon comes as matsya avatar has an interaction with manu maharaj with the seven sages 
and he also kills a demon named Hayagriva. He comes as Varaha Dev, but he appears from the nostril of Lord Brahma. And in front of all the demigods, from being the size of a thumb, he grows to a gigantic form. The demigods worship him, interacts with the demigods, then he goes, kills Hiranyaksha. Appears as Narasimha Dev. He's fighting. At the same time, in Bhagavatam, he's having fun. Right? It mentions Narasimha Dev was playing with Hiranyakashipu just like the cat plays with a rat before it kills the rat. At one point, Narasimha Dev was grabbing on to Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyakashipu starts hitting on Narasimha Dev's hand. And Narasimha Dev thinks, if I don't let him go, that will break him down mentally. So to keep his efforts high, he lets him go. And immediately the demigods are thinking, Oh my God, such a powerful demon escaped from the clutches of the Lord. At the same time, Hiranyakashipu is thinking, Ha, you saw? He's afraid of me, that's why he let me go. Even in that scenario, he's having interactions with his devotees. And then, to uphold the blessings of Lord Brahma, he waits for that time. He waits for the Sandhya. Till that time, he's just fighting, killing, letting him go, grabbing him back. He gets hit between his nails, jerks him off, continues fighting. When the time comes, he kills. In every form, when Krishna appears, he first has interactions with his devotees. And then, he goes killing the demons. Same way, as Krishna, he appeared, went straight to Braj. Had interaction with the, de the devotees. Kamsa started to send demons. While playing, he kills. He killed Putna. He was such a small boy, barely crawling. Killed. Shakatasura came, killed him just by a kick. So many demons came. He went for a ride, you know, on Trinavarta. And every time he comes, he comes back to the devotees. So that's why Srila Prabhupada he says it's the duty of the de of Krishna's devotees. To serve Krishna as he wants. Krishna's business is to kill the demons. And therefore, this should be a devotee's business also. What are these demons we are supposed to be killing? They are the six enemies we all have. Lust, anger, greed, madness. Illusion. We need to kill all of them. How are we going to do that? By performing devotional service. Unfortunately, we are not worried about performing devotional service. Recently, we were having a discussion with some devotees, thinking about how to involve the community of devotees. We have such a big community of devotees in Sridham Mayapur. How to involve them? We are having a festival, Janmashtami, coming, what, four weeks away from us. Within a month, there is Janmashtami festival. We can make it the biggest grand festival, the Krishna's appearance day. But when it comes to involving the community of devotees, Hardly anybody comes forward to help. Few years ago, we thought, let's clean up the whole Mayapur Dham. Let's get devotees, they can clean different sections of Sridham Mayapur. And when it comes, you know, a few days before Janmashtami. So when there is Janmashtami, there is not one garbage in the, in the locality here. We can, in, you know, can have Krishna's festival in a very clean place. That was one of the thoughts of the festival. We even had 
you know, devotees designated for different areas. Did it actually happen? No. Why? Because not interested in doing the service. Not many devotees came forward. When there was time for prasadam at midnight, all the kitchens are full, packed. You interested for prasad? Very good. That's also devotional service. But when it comes to doing practical work, no, that's not me. I'm not going to do it. We have such a big community. We want to, uh, how to say, as, you know, have a festival, grand festival for Sri Prabhupada's Avir Bhavati. But it's all, you know, the responsibility of the management. They have to do. They got to collect the Lakshmi for it. They got to prepare for it. They got to have the festival. They got to arrange for everybody's prasadam. And we as the community, we go there, sit in for Prabhupada's Vyas Puja for some time. Then we start dozing off because listening to glorification, the glorification of the founder Acharya of ISKCON is such a boring thing to do. That's why we decide, let's go out, have a walk. We will listen on Mayapur TV because we have more important things to do in our house. Practically doing no service. And then, prasadam time, come, rush, make a big you know, big grand entrance, eat, make a big mess, walk away. And then, put it up on the Mayapur forum. The management did not do a proper job. We had not enough prasadam. We didn't do this, blah, 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 blah. What about our service? What about our duty? Did not happen. We did not serve Krishna. We are expecting service from Krishna, from his devotees. Why do we do that? Out of complete laziness, out of complete ignorance. And when somebody brings this out, it's a big thing. How can you speak like this? It was a very, very sad situation we just had a week ago while discussing with the devotees. The devotees are not interested to come forward. Next day, the devotee who arranges this Bhagavatam class, he said, would I like to give a class? I said, sure. Maybe I'm requesting all the devotees who are sitting here, who are watching on Mayapur TV, come forward. Sri Dham Mayapur belongs to us. Sri Sri Radha Madhava belongs to us. Their festival is our festival. Come forward. Don't just dump it on somebody. The management will take care. No, come. Help the management. Many times on Mayapur forum we hear, you know, oh, this management is like this, this management is like this. But I would like to glorify a couple devo you know, the management today. A few days ago I was going at 9 o'clock at night going back home. And I see two brahmacharis top level managers walking on the road going to to Gornagar and they were checking on the lights right and they say oh it would have been better if they were standing like that nine o'clock at night two brahmacharis walk head you know top level managers trying to see how to make more light on the road that we walk on there is enough light but they say it will be better if we do it like that who thinks about that? Our work is done, fix the road, put the lights up. No, no, they are waiting and checking. If it is good, can we make it better? The devotees are working very, very hard. Sure, they make mistakes. We all make mistakes. But to rectify is by becoming proper devotees of Krishna. We go there, help. How can we be helpful? Then, that's, and then the next line, Sri Prabhupada says, because the people of Kali Yuga are fallen, people like us, however, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, out of kindness for them, 
did not bring any weapon to kill them. Rather, by spreading Krishna consciousness, love of Krishna, he wanted to kill their nefarious demoniac activities. This is the purpose of Krishna consciousness movement. Unless the demoniac activities on the surface of the world are diminished or vanquished, no one can be happy. Srimad Bhagavatam is just like an open heart surgery. If you read it, you will see, you will feel Srimad Bhagavatam is talking about me. Everyone will feel that. Oh, I have that problem. Yes. I have this demonia, you know, nefarious demoniac activities I perform on a daily basis. Uh, yes, I am not chanting Krishna, you know, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra properly. It's difficult for me to go for Mangala Arati. That's why then, the program for the conditioned soul is fully described in Bhagavad Gita. Sri Prabhupada's complaint to the devotees was, we don't read his books. That was his complaint. We are preaching nicely. We are doing other services good. He was very happy with all the devotees' efforts, but his complaint was, devotees don't read his books. If we read, start reading Sri Prabhupada's books, our life will change. Chanakya Pandit, he mentions every day, a person should read at least a chapter of any Shastra. If you cannot read a chapter, read half a chapter. If you cannot read or study half a chapter, at least do a page. At least a paragraph, a sentence, at least one word you start with. And then you can increase. With every syllable, with every word learning new, it makes a big difference in our life. We study Shri Prabhupada's books. Everything, Shri Prabhupada said, everything is in my books. There's one devotee in Mumbai. He's giving hotel management based on Bhagavad Gita. A course on hotel management. How did he figure that out? <laughs> That's called his realization. His field of activity is hotel management. He teaches hotel management through Bhagavad Gita. There is another, devo another devotee. He teaches biology from Srimad Bhagavatam. We hear of two, de two devotees. Their articles many times comes in back to Godhead. They had, they did not go to school. The mother, she taught them everything based on Srimad Bhagavatam. Their study was Bhagavatam. And one of those, one of the, I think the elder brother, he just did his PhD either in chemistry or on, you know, I think chemistry. How is that possible? How did he manage to do that? He found it in Srimad Bhagavatam. He's one of the extremely scholarly persons in Iskon. Met him a few days ago. And he said, and I said, Prabhu, how did you manage to study all these? He said, Prabhupada's books. He said, I never went to his college. Never stepped. You know, say, if they would be raining, to take shelter, I would not enter the college gate, even though if it was raining, I wouldn't do that. But today, he's going around the world preaching in many different colleges. And the professors of those colleges are sitting there making notes. Why? He got it all from Srila Prabhupada's books. Srila Prabhupada has said, everything is in my books. Let people chant the Hare Krishna mantra constantly. Then their demoniac tendencies will be killed and they will become first class devotee, happy in this life and in the next. A question for all the devotees here. How many of you are having difficulty falling asleep at night? Everybody goes to sleep instantly as soon as you drop down. Can you please put your hands up? How many people are having difficulties going to sleep at night? Few. Why? 
when you lie down in bed the brain starts working and starts spinning okay this has to be done that is my problem this is my problem how am I supposed to solve this problem what will I do tomorrow when I wake up in the morning right am I right no what's your what does it take you to fall asleep So that you're contemplating on the philosophy while going to sleep. Okay. But then when you lie down in bed. Yeah, that happens. Many people have difficulty falling asleep. They cannot sleep for half an hour, one hour. They are lying down in bed. Can't fall asleep. Why? So much worries. Worries about what? Anything we do, it eventually is going to end up what Krishna wants. It's not going to happen in any other way. Surely, we got to work for what we would like to do. But that's why Krishna says, perform your duty, don't worry about the results. You do your job, complete it. Don't worry what's going to come up next. In our life, we have seen several times Krishna knows what's the best for us. And that's why he, you know, just leave it up to him. Anyway, it's going to end up the way how he likes. Why to worry about things? You want to achieve something? Work hard for it. If you get it, Hare Krishna. If you don't get it, Hare Krishna. What to do? If we chant Hare Krishna mantra constantly, the demoniac tendencies will be killed. And we will attain the faith, Rakhe Krishna Mare Ke, Mare Krishna Rakhe Ke. If Krishna wants to kill, nobody can protect. If Krishna wants to protect, nobody can kill. I'll tell you some interesting story. We were on Braj Mandal Parikrama, just with the boys. And we ended up in a place called Mansarovar, where Radharani became very upset with Krishna and Krishna spent a lot of time trying to pacify her. And from the tears of Srimadhi Radharani, a whole pukur, a whole pond was created, Mansarovar. When we went there, there was nothing around the whole Mansarovar. The nearest village was three kilometers away, named Bhim. We arrived there around three o'clock in the afternoon settled down and we went out for doing madhukari trying to see what we can get to eat so we went out three kilometers in these three kilometers the only thing is two kilometers of just fields and one kilometer of jungle and few days before that somebody scared us saying you have to be very very careful there are sometimes decoits in the villages of Vrindavan so while going there we were like this place looks very very convenient place for decoits anyway we went to the village by the time we reached village was about 5 30 and they said oh we have already finished eating no worries sit down we will cook for you and we were four of us they started cooking and you know the villagers gathered around us we had more than 200 people surrounding us they were just talking who are you where are you coming from what do you do just talking and talking and talking and they kept us there till 8 o'clock it's completely dark and uh, you know we filled up our we had cloth bags with rotis and our tiffins with sabjis and we started walking back it's dark and we have to cross one kilometer of village two kilometers of fields so we said okay and when we are at the last house they said just be careful Sometimes you get thieves and decoits around this village. It's like joy. We start and one of the boys, small boys, he starts chanting Narasimha prayers. 
and we passed through that kilometer of a forest peacefully no problem then we had to walk straight and turn right and Mansur over the temple is quite at a distance two kilometers distance so while we are walking we have our torch lights we are walking and in the middle of the fields we see another torch light there could be whatever they didn't make any difference but there is fear in the heart there might be dacoits around what will they do to us we have nothing that we can lose we had no money you know barely a few you know few hundred rupees we had no money we are walking around just dhoti and chadar we have our tiffins what could they possibly steal from us there is we had nothing but there is fear what will they do right so we go walk that way and then we start going this way and we notice the light which was here in the middle of the fields is slowly slowly coming towards the road you know every bits and pieces when you're scared makes you more afraid so we are like the light is coming more close what's going to happen and then I, I was the eldest I said let's switch off our light you know we have and then they won't be able to see us great we switch off our lights and we continue walking as soon as we switched off our lights this big light which was coming towards the uh, towards the road suddenly they made it you know bright and focused straight on us and we heard the most evil laugh in our life you know you when you hear that you hear in Ramayana this you know, Tadaka, and, you go, ah, 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 and that kind of laugh we heard we are scared we took off our wooden shoes we had a stick in our hand we have our bags are full up filled with we had about 150 rotis with us tiffins we grabbed our wooden shoes and we just run we had one big boy one small boy one big boy one small boy we're just running and we run 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 and one of the small boys he was a little fat he says Chaitanya I can't walk I can't run anymore I can't run anymore so they can no problem can you walk fast yes and we are walking fast looking back it's just darkness we don't see anything we don't hear anything we are scared and we are walking fast while walking a distance I said, can you run now yes we can run and we start running while running you know the small boy in the front he drops one of the shoes he doesn't care he's just running I go back grab his shoes continue catch up with them continue running run up certain more distance he dropped his subji tiffin the, another big boy runs back grabs the subji tiffin continue running the, again the little heavy boy says Shwetanya I can't run anymore can you walk fast yes okay then we continue walking fast at, well, after running for some distance we saw the gate of Mansar over and we got hopes we are safe and we said look 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 there is this gate of Mansar over okay we are, running, we are getting there fast we are getting there closer as we are getting closer we saw headlights turn on and bikes started vroom, vroom, vroom. immediately the samskara from Bollywood comes right now we are thinking there are those decoids in the front they got information via phone that we are running and because those guys couldn't catch up to us there are these guys on the bike and it's like now you do or die situation so we are having our sticks up high and just screaming out ready to fight the bike starts you know coming towards us and we are just screaming out the mantra and as these bikes come close to us they shout out to us we're like shocked what's that and we're like Radhishyam and we run into that inside the temple and we see all the boys asleep guys wake up there are techoids in this village wake up mm, okay no we are serious we are being chased by techoids mm, okay we go the teacher was there teacher teacher wake up there are decoids in this village he said okay just relax drink have a drink of water what happened we tell him the whole story he says okay just don't worry go to sleep krishna will protect you what he can't sleep we are just being chased by decoids 
Okay? Go to sleep, Krishna will protect you. And he went to sleep. And we had two, and all of us are looking around, all the boys are around, and they had these nets around the temple. So I said, at least let's take the boys and all of our things in the center of the temple so the decoys cannot harass us. And we locked the temple, you know, the grill, and put our lock there. And we are sitting, two of us, myself and my friend, guarding whole night. If any time decoid comes, then we can protect. Yeah, right. <laughs> we had sticks, we didn't know how to use them. And then, after some time, I'm falling asleep. I told my friend, can you stay awake? I'll go to sleep, and when you are falling asleep, wake me up, and I will stay awake, and you fall asleep. Yeah, we took turns whole night guarding the boys. Next day morning, boys wake up, take bath. We had a nice Mangla Arati. And me and my friend are like, you know, dozing off, went to sleep. Next day morning, you know, all the 150 rotis that we had, we were 12 of us. No, sorry, 8 of us. How we are ever going to finish 150 rotis? Ate whatever we could, distributed the rest, continued walking. The pujari of the temple comes in the morning. And we told, we asked, is this story right? There are decoits in this village. We said, no. He said, but that's what happened to us at night. He said, they are just teenagers in the village trying to harass you. If we had faith in Krishna, we would have been fine. The lack of faith in Krishna got us this whole night trauma. Anyway, what could we have done? We didn't know how to use sticks. We didn't know the place. It's completely dark. We don't know where to go. Then, the story of Prahlad Maharaj was told by our teacher. What he, did he do? He remembered Krishna. He was thrown in boiling hot oil. He was thrown under the elephant's feet. Got, you know, you know thrown in among these poisonous snakes. What did he do? Always remembered Krishna. Did anything happen to him? No. So why don't didn't you just become passive, you know, relaxed, remember Krishna? That thing, even though it felt like a trauma, but gave a realization in our life. Don't worry about anything. Try your best. Leave the rest to Krishna. He will take care. That made this realization made our life very, very peaceful. Sure, we still get worried about things. But it's easy to deal with those worries when we remember this incident in our life. When we read Srimad Bhagavatam, when we read Srila Prabhupada's books, it brings a lot of peace, as Srila Prabhupada said. <clears throat> it will bring peace in the world <clears throat> just by we performing our duty, serving Krishna as He wants. Not as we are comfortable doing it. There is one devotee, a friend of mine. His habit is, Hey, can you help me with this thing? It means you do it by yourself. I am going away. Help means he is there involved and he cannot do it. So we will help him finish the job. But his habit was, Help me means you do the work, I go away. So service means how the other person wants, not the way how we can do. That's why Sri Prabhupada says, it is the duty of Krishna's devotees to serve Krishna as He wants. Krishna's business is to kill the demons and therefore this should be a devotee's business too. This is straight our responsibility given to us by Sri Prabhupada. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knowing the, uh, the, uh, the people of Kali Yuga are fallen, does out of kindness for them, did not bring any weapons to kill them. Rather, by spreading Krishna consciousness, love of Krishna, he wanted to kill the nefarious demoniac activities. That's what we are supposed to be doing. But Sri Prabhupada said, first become conscious. Then you can become Krishna conscious. Be conscious is not a simple thing. It requires a lot of thinking. 
you know, how do I place things? While coming inside the temple, do I just throw my shoes or actually I go put it up on the stand nicely? While walking, some devotee or some sannyasi or some senior lady just walked by. Did I say Hare Krishna? Did I greet them or no? It's very difficult. You walk down the streets. This Mayapur has only devotees. Only devotees. But when we cross each other, you know, we tend to look the other direction as if we have not seen them. We don't greet them saying Hare Krishna. How much does it take? Hare Krishna. You don't need to know that person. Just need to say Hare Krishna. Slowly, slowly, you will start knowing each other. That's called Sadhu Sangha. But we ourselves, ourselves block ourselves from advancing in Krishna consciousness. There, that is the difficulty. We stop ourselves because of lack of faith in Krishna. Increase the faith in Krishna, problems will decrease automatically. Like if you see the deity of Tirupati Balaji, he's pretty famous, everybody has taken darshan of Balaji. His left hand is up to his knees, holding it like that. And his right hand is showing like that. So this is called Abhaya Mudra. Fearless, be fearless. So he says, you come in my shelter, pointing it towards his feet. As you come to my shelter, you'll become fearless. And the difficulties, the ocean of difficulties in this material world that you are drowning in, that will drop down all the way to your knee level so you can easily cross it. Krishna comes and he's standing there like that for your past whatever, five to seven thousand years. <laughs> Come to my shelter, become fearless, and your problems which you are drowning in will just come down to your knees so you can easily walk through. No problems in life. This is Krishna consciousness. Very simple, very straightforward, very easy to take it up, but our false ego is a problem in the middle. So we hope that uh, we overcome these difficulties. We kill the demons, the six defects that we have, the six enemies that we have, we destroy them. We come forward to doing Krishna's service, live in the spiritual world, Sri Mayapur, and chant Hare Krishna, become happy, spread Krishna consciousness, and go back home, back to God. Hare Krishna. If there is any comments by any Vaishnavas, or any questions, yes Prabhu. Oh, he has. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Very nice class Prabhu today. Thank you. Uh, Prabhu, actually, demonic, demigods, there are two categories are there, no? So, demonic and Demigods, both, everybody is the Lord Krishna is the Biza Pradata for both, whether demigods and demonic. So when the demonic are, especially where they, when they are doing in a cruel ways, we are highlighting that they are demonics. When the same demigods also doing the same behavior in, in some of the cases, like say, for example, Bema. Once he apparently chastises his uh, own daughter, own sister, like that. Similarly, Indra is also behaving in such a way, in different, different categories. Then why the, what is the difference between demigods and that uh, demonic uh, natures? Okay, so what is the difference between demigods and demons? When demons yes. do certain yeah, things, yeah, yeah. we call it as demonic activities, but we see demigods sometimes doing the same thing. For example, Lord Brahma became lusty after his own daughter. And Indra is also many times seen doing, you know, going and harassing somebody's wives and things like that. Yeah, so the difference between the two is... That for demons, those activities are kind of normal. For demigods, they sometimes fall prey to those natures that they have. And as soon as that happens, when they, are, they come back to their senses, or they are rectified, they correct themselves. For example, when Lord Brahma becomes lusty behind his own daughter, when the, when the, when the rishis told him about it, that what are you doing? You are the supreme uh, living entity in this, material, in, in this universe. 
how can you run behind your own daughter? Immediately he gives up that body. He takes on to the new body. When Indra, he goes to Gautama Rishi's wife, you know, because he's attracted to her, he gets, the, you know, he gets cursed of having eyes all over his body. He rectifies himself. So that's why they are, that's why they are called Suris. Suris means they are devotees. Whenever they have difficulties, they approach Krishna. Demons will find different materialistic ways of solving the problem. They will not surrender to Krishna. Is that okay, Prabhu? No, no, but at this context, one, one thing I would like to tell you, Prabhu, in the, one of the appliances which was given in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, I am the Indra, he says. See, one of the, he is given the plenty of appliances, you know, in all the appliances. In one of the appliances, he mentioned that Indra is, he is the Indra only. Right. Then being, being a Lord, being a Supreme Personality of Godhead, then he is, one of the appliances is Indra, but he is also behave the same way, and at the time, time of Govardhana Puja also in the behave in the same way. Yeah, so Indra actually is a post, which has the power of Krishna, of administration. That post is taken up by a living entity. For example, we have a temple precedent. Now precedent is a post. Different devotee can become the precedent of the same temple. That does not mean just become, because he became the temple precedent, he's a senior most in the temple, that he is Mr. Perfect. He still has the defects that he carries as an individual living entity. So Indra is an empowered position by the Lord for the management of the whole universe. The living entity who is qualified to become Indra becomes Indra, but does not mean that his nature has completely changed. He still gets affected by Maya. That's why he's still in the material world. Once he starts getting affected by Maya, he'll go back to God. It. Is that okay, Prabhu? Thank you. There is Prabhuji at the back. Hare Krishna, this is uh, Amit from Canada. Uh, you have to speak a little loudly, Prabhu. Okay, Hare Krishna, this is uh, Amit from Canada. Uh, so, I have a question regarding an issue that, like, um, that I often struggle with and I aspire to solve. So, um, like, when, while trying to strike a balance between different aspects of my life, um, like how, like how do I make it more Krishna conscious? Uh, so that's that's my question. How do you become more Krishna conscious? While trying to strike a balance between different aspects of my life. Yeah, one thing is uh, how to balance different aspects of my life and become Krishna conscious. That's the question. And yeah, like how how to bring Krishna consciousness into it. Yeah, so. For example, are you a student or you are working? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working as a lawyer. You're working as a lawyer. So when you are working as a lawyer, you have different cases to solve in the court. You have a family. You have friends. And so all these different aspects of life, how do I fit in while becoming Krishna conscious? <clears throat> See, Krishna consciousness is our life. Whatever we do should be centered around Krishna. You are a lawyer. You try to help the person as a devotee. There are, you know, sometimes, you know, whatever variety of a lawyer you are, you know, maybe property, maybe, you know, social, maybe, uh, how to say, criminal or whatever. You try to help the person out, finding Krishna conscious ways. And you'll find that by reading Sri Prabhupada books. How to take care of your family, how to deal with your wife and children, with your parents. All of those things should be centered around Krishna. How Krishna would like it. How do I work in this way that would please Krishna? For example, you are, you know, you don't break the signal. Why? Because you are afraid you will get caught by the police and charged by him. Right? But you could also not break the signal because that's what you are, not, you are supposed to do. 
you don't break signals so either you how to say you always remember krishna or you act in ways that you never forget krishna you're always thinking how can i please krishna or you're thinking i'm do th i'm doing this activity will it please krishna so by constantly thinking like that you can balance your life easily is that okay yes prabhuji Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you for your nice class. You can see that you have a lot of association of the Guru Kul and you're studying. I have one maybe a question or a remark is that studying these, uh, you mentioned that some devotees, they are teaching management through Bhagavad Gita. Somebody is teaching, what was the other thing from Srimad Bhagavatam? Teaching biology. Biology. Now, I was wondering this because as I was studying, it's like, see, Bhagavatam has all these sciences in there, that's undoubtedly. But in order to elaborate on those topics, other scriptures have also been written, like Niti Shastra, Manu Smriti, and things like that. So somebody can teach biology from Srimad Bhagavatam, even if he didn't go to school, that means he must have studied biology in some other life. Otherwise, how did he get the inspiration? Right. So isn't it that, that's what I understood, these other books are also necessary to study. It's like somebody who can teach management from the, from the Gita, that's only because he's a very good manager and he can connect the material science to the spiritual science. Right. Otherwise, just from the seed to manifest all these other branches, you have to be like a prajapati. <laughs> Otherwise, it is not possible. Yeah. So, it means we are trying to explain that Bhagavatam, even these minor little things, most small little things like hotel management or biology, even those kind of things, can be covered up by Srimad Bhagavatam. Of course, they may have their, you know, the individual might have studied it and he got his realization from Srimad Bhagavatam. And now he wants to teach it based on Srimad Bhagavatam. Like Sotra Maharaj, he was teaching psychology from Srimad Bhagavatam. You know, he wrote the book Vedanta Psychology. You know, so he was teaching psychology from Srimad Bhagavatam. So you, yes, you do have you know, every, every individual has their expertise and you study Srimad Bhagavatam and you you can out branch from that and you teach this is this particular subject I'm teaching from Srimad Bhagavatam so they may have those expertise but the point is even those minor things which are technically if you use if you consider the whole universe they are quite worthless even those things are involved you can teach from Srimad Bhagavatam what to speak about going back to Godhead as Shri Prabhupada, that's why we are trying to explain. Shri Prabhupada said, everything is in my books. So if you are interested in going back to Godhead, you don't need those Nidhi Shastras and this and that, which is the highest goal of life. Like Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he mentioned, if there's some calamity to happen and all the books in the world are burnt, only Srimad Bhagavatam remains, there is no loss. And even if Srimad Bhagavatam gets burnt and Sri Chaitanya Charita Amrita remains, there is no loss. So as per the goal of our human form of life, going back to Godhead, you don't need to divert yourself in different branches. Only reading Srila Prabhupada's books is enough. So now, having said that and fully accepting that principle, going back to Godhead is the goal of life, but between uh, Dharma and Moksha, that's the time come, and most of the Grihastas, and this is mainly Grihastas at the moment, there is need for these skills in order to maintain yourself. And sometimes I heard this complaint that, yes, you can be in Guruko, especially when my will Guruko, but then my child is not able to maintain himself, either through a job or through some business or, and I know what Maharaj said, he says, I'm training the boys not to get a job outside, but to be in his, to get a job in his con, so to say. So in that sense, you, can you, is it not that you can fully, you know, write off the sciences? Because, you know, like physics, physics and chemistry, these are in seed form only in Bhagavatam. You cannot big, you know, bake bricks or, you know, uh, make steel based on the principles of Srimad Bhagavatam. But you need them in order to build a Gurukul or you need them in order to, to build a Kambam like Mayapur. So then these other sciences, these are necessary. Do you agree with that? Um, not fully. Then because, because 
Now, since you gave the example of Gurukul and the parents complaining that once my child comes out of Gurukul, he's not able to get a job or maintain himself running a business. If you ask me, I have not met any Gurukul boy that can't maintain himself. For example, you know, we have you know, we got Anatrita Prabhu sitting in our, among us. He's a Gurukul boy. He's serving as the, as the secretary of the GBCs, Prabhu. He's serving as the secretary of the GBCs. Well, I would say those boys are not in Mayapur <laughs> anymore. Then I met one, one person from Canada, Gurukuli. He's running 19 pharmaceutical channels in Canada. A few years ago, I met a person in Tamil Nadu. His father had one gold showroom. He made 100 gold showrooms throughout whole Tamil Nadu. We had one boy who was, how to say, he was, sometimes he was involved as the um, advisor to one of the ministers in Hungary. One of our students is today's GBC of China, which is a communist country. Okay, so you're mentioning all the success cases. What about the non-success cases? Because the complaint is Give valid. an example. Is the complaint valid or not valid? Huh? The complaint, is it valid? Because I am not a Grihastha, but that complaint, there must be some truth in it. Give an example. Name me that person who has not been successful. You won't be able to because there is none. That's why I'm telling you the examples of those who are actually successful. And these are the big ones. You know, we even have, you know, one boy, you know, used to sell pan outside the main gate. Now he has a big fruit shop. As soon as you go out outside the main gate, on the right, that's Uttam Prabhu there. He was a Gurukuli. He's maintaining himself. All those boys who came out, doesn't matter what is their economical status, the way how they talk with others is very, very gentle. The way how they deal with people is very nice. So what is the, you know, if you, that person you go, he's just outside the main gate, you go going to meet him, his name is Uttam Prabhu. When you go speak with him, he's very nice, he's gentle. He just has a fruit shop outside the main gate. So would you say he's not successful? He is successful. His wife is there with him, his wife is happy. Wife happy, the whole universe is happy. That is success. <laughs> that is success. <laughs> Okay, bro? Okay, so we are 10, pa 10 minutes past 9. Uh, we will end here. Shri Labrabhada Ki Jai Shri Radha Madhava Shtasagivrinda Shri Mana Mahaprabhu Ki Jai Shri Shri Panchatatva Ki Jai Shri Pralad Narasimadeva Bhagavan Ki Jai Samaveta Gaurabhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Nitai Gaurapremanande